I love Jesus. He's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. Oh, I love Jesus. He's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. Oh, I love Jesus. He's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. Oh, I love Jesus. He's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. Oh, I love Jesus. He's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, <clears throat> I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. Well, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Newby. Good morning, Tamika. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Shy. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Jackson. Good morning, Reese. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Gibson. Good morning, Brother Henderson. God bless you. Good morning, Elder and Sister Dorset. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Polk. Good morning, Sister Banks. God bless you, Sister Eleanor. Good morning, Dr. Harrison. Good morning, Mika. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Deacon Bryant. Good morning, Sister Beckett. God bless you, Sister um, Johnson Walker, God bless you, Deacon Walker and the family. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you, Brother Aaron and the family. Good morning, Mother Home, and God bless you. Good morning, Alicia. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Stokes, Sister Stokes and the Stokes family. God bless you. God bless you. Bishop and Mother Joseph, God bless you, Brother Bailey. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Sister Mary. God bless you, Sister Speller. Good morning, Sister Roseford. Good morning, Mother Hudson. God bless you. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Mother Street. Good morning, Sister Deborah. Good morning, Lydia. God bless you and your family. Good morning. God bless you, Pastor and Lady Williams. Good morning, Sister Burnett. Good morning, Sister Ford. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. God bless you, Sister Stimson. Good morning, Dr. Haywood. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you, Bishop Alde, Lady Alde, and all of this, your family and all the saints in the Allegheny Diocese. God bless you, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Perry and the family. Good morning, Elder Bailey and Mother Bailey. Good morning, Sister Beverly. Good morning, Carmelita. Good morning, Sister Butler. God bless you, Brother Butler and the family. Good morning, Sister Barnes. God bless you, Sister Roberts. Good morning, Brianna. God bless you. Good morning, Francine. It was wonderful seeing you in worship yesterday. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Graves. Good morning, Angela. God bless you, my dear sister. Good morning, Sister Tiana. Good morning, Dr. Haywood. God bless you and Sister Haywood and the family. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Cheek. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Missionary Bryant. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Roberts. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Carr. God bless you. Praying for all of you. Good morning, Sister Roberts. Good morning, Sister Mamie. God bless you. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to bring to you a biblical meditation and prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And every day we see the manifestation of God through prayer. Yesterday, we had a precious sister who was, it was her first time in church since the pandemic. It wasn't that she wanted to be home, but she had some sicknesses that were keeping her at home. And finally, God gave her the physical and the spiritual strength to make it to the house of God. And it was such a blessing to see her. And people are still just coming back to church for a number of reasons. But I'm thanking God for everybody that's coming back to the house of God because God 
is answering prayer. As always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it with us. If you're on Facebook, you can place it right into the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. For those who are on Instagram, you can place it right there in the chat on your screen or you can um, direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody on the conference call, and I thank God for our faithful conference call listeners, to everybody on YouTube or anybody can text in your prayer request to 336 Five six seven five three five eight. Again, that prayer request is three three six five six seven five three five eight. Text in your prayer request. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them, and we are believing God that He is going to bless exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or even think, according to the power that works in us. I want you to join me now. In the word of God, Psalm number 81, Psalm number 81, and I want to begin reading at verse number six, Psalm 81 and verse six. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou callest in trouble and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsel. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should not have endured forever. They should have, he should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. I want to talk to you this morning from the thought, the call to obedience. The call to obedience. The call to obey. What is it about man that makes obedience a problem. And if we would be honest, some of us are open and inclined to take instruction, to receive instruction, to um, listen, to take heed. But with many of us, our slant is disobedience. In other words, we have to be compelled, forced, driven to do what we're asked to do. If you would think about all of us as children growing up, almost all of us disobeyed our parents. If we obeyed them, it was only because they were watching us and checking on us and um, following up with us. But they would lay down expectations and rules and guidelines, and many of us um, didn't do what we were told to do. Um, we suffered the consequences, whether it was a timeout or being grounded or having privileges taken away or um, mama getting a switch or a hairbrush or a belt, daddy getting a strap. And that made us obey. And we obeyed out of um, fear of retribution, fear of punishment, because it just doesn't seem to be in our nature um, to just simply obey. When we got to school, many of us stayed in the principal's office simply because we would not obey the rules on the bus, in the classroom, in the cafeteria, in the gym. We challenged it. Um, psychologists call it now 
that um, people test limits. They test limits. They test to see where the boundaries are. They push the envelope. Some of us don't do what we're supposed to do until we're threatened with incarceration or we're threatened with um, termination from our jobs or we're threatened um, that we're going to get put out of the house if we don't do what we're asked to do because it just seems to be a part of us not to follow directions, to push the envelope, to test the limits, whatever you want to call it. And, and we not only do this with each other. We not only do this with our parents or our supervisors or our pastors or our leaders in the church, we do it with God. There is a fundamental problem with obedience. Yeah, there's a fundamental problem with obedience. And 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 that that problem is the flesh because all of us deal with the flesh. All of us live in the flesh. All of us are incarcerated in these fleshly um, shells. And these fleshly shells have desires and lusts and things that we want that are sometimes so compelling that we will follow them rather than following the voice of God. We hear the voice of God. Ah, God, Lord, help me with this. We know the voice of God. We read the Bible. We look at the precepts of the scripture, but we struggle with obedience. We struggle, and because we struggle with obedience, we miss out on the favor of God. Because we struggle with obedience, we miss out on the mercy and the grace of God. We miss out on God's provision. You know, I'm going to say this, and you don't have to like it, but it's the truth. There are more things that God could be doing for us if we simply learned how to obey his word. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. There are more things that God could be doing for us, in us, through us if we simply obeyed his word. But we struggle with obedience. And because we struggle with obedience, we struggle with the principles and we struggle with God releasing favor. Oh my God, we struggle with holiness. Holiness is a problem for many of us simply because we don't obey. The Lord tells us, gives us guidelines in the scriptures of what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And in all honesty, most of those guidelines, in fact, I think all of those guidelines are reasonable. The things that you read in the Bible are not things that, that, that you shouldn't be able to do. Love and compassion and respect and hallelujah, living by the word are things that are possible because if it was impossible, God would not require it. Yes, it does sometimes require sacrifice. Yes, it does sometimes require nailing our flesh to the cross. Yes, it sometimes requires making him the priority priority as opposed to ourselves, but it's possible or God would not require it. If it was impossible, God wouldn't ask it of us. If it was completely out of the realm of reality, God would not require it. Whatever God's will is, God's will is doable. Oh God, you got to tell yourself that because the flesh tells you, I can't do this. The flesh tells you, I can't do that. The flesh says that this or that is impossible. But if you would listen to the word of God, and if you would listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, He's telling you, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And obedience was a fundamental problem with Israel. They struggled with it, even though God showed himself in a powerful way. He, The Bible says in verse 6, I removed his shoulder from the burden. They were slaves. They were captives. They were living in Egypt. And he said I his hands were delivered from the pots. They were digging in the mud. They were serving. Serving, oh God, the Egyptians, building their pyramids and building their great obelisk and all of their monuments. They were doing that and their hands were in the mud and the dirt. And then the pot, he said, thou callest in trouble and I delivered thee. He said, I have heard your cry by reason of your taskmasters. And I've seen, oh God, your afflictions and I know your sorrows. The Lord knew about it. And because he knew about it, he delivered them. And I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. The waters became bitter because of the disobedience and because of the um. 
complaining and the murmuring of the people of God. But look at what the Bible says in verse 8. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. He is crying out to them because the before you can obey, you got to hear. And that's where the struggle is. A lot of people simply do not hear the word of God. They hear their ambitions. They hear their emotions. They hear what they want, but they do not hear the word of God. Wherewithal shall a man cleanse his ways? By taking heed to the word of God, learning how to just hear God's word. Because if you hear God's word, God's word is going to have an impact in your life. God's word is going to have is going to have an impact in your behavior, in your attitude. He says, hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. If thou wilt hearken unto me, look, here's the evidence. There shall be no, there shall no strange God be in thee. If you are living in obedience, there's no room for a strange God. There, and, and, and here's the reality. I know many of us, if I said that you are an idol worshiper, you would say, Bishop, I don't have any idols in my house. I'm not worshiping statues, but you can worship things like you worship an idol. And anything that takes the place of God in your life is an idol God. Any person that you revere more than you revere the word of God becomes an idol God. God, just hallelujah. And he's saying, if if you would listen, there would be no strange gods. There would be no ungodly characters leading and directing your life because he said, I would be in control. These strange gods, these other gods, these gods that come from other places are the result of what? Your disobedience. He said, put away the false gods, put away the idols, put away those things that are not real. He says, they have hands, but they don't feel. They have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. He says, put it away. Get rid of it. Hear me. He says, there won't be a strange God. He declares in verse 10, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I'll fill it. I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. I'm the one that broke the back of Pharaoh, that brought down the mightiest army on the face of the earth. I'm the one that did it. And if you open your mouth, I'll fill it. I will fill your mouth. I will provide for your needs. Obedience creates the need meeting in your life. I'm talking to somebody. You just need to step out and do it. Oh my God, hear what I'm saying. You just need to step out and do what God has told you to do. It doesn't look easy. It looks challenging. It looks difficult. But if you had the faith to just step out, you would see the manifestation of the power of God. God providing, God providing, God providing. You're looking at somebody that in so many instances, I stepped out on faith. I'm not bragging. I'm just testifying. And God has never left me forsaken. Just stepping out in faith, just obeying the word because, oh God, I hear you, Holy Ghost. You can't have faith without obedience. Hear what I say. You can't have faith without obedience. Obedience. If you if you believe God, you will obey God. Let me say that again. If you believe God, you will obey God. It's impossible to say that you honor God. It's impossible to say that you serve God, but you won't obey God. I don't care what your office and your title is. If you won't obey, that means you don't have faith. But then he says, but my people would not hearken to my voice. They just wouldn't listen. They just wouldn't listen. How many hard-headed saints does the Lord have in the church? How many hard-hearted saints does the Lord have in the church that their hearts are so hard, their heads are so hard that they simply will not listen to the voice of God? And, 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 and when that happens, then you see the manifestation in verse 12. I gave them up unto their own heart's lust. It's in also in Romans chapter one that the Lord gave them over to lasciviousness. He gave them 
over, oh God, to their own inclination of their mind and their spirit. He gave them over. It's kind of like when you, when you got too old for your parents to beat or your parents to do whatever. They, they said this, do what you want to do. And you just smiled at that because you thought that was them releasing you. No, that was your parents giving up on you, saying, do what you want to do. Do it the way you want to do it. You don't want to hear? Then go ahead and do it the way that you want to do it. That's the that's one of the saddest things that you can say to somebody is do what you want to do. That means there's a right way, but you keep choosing the wrong way. And finally, somebody says, do what you want to do. And when we disobey God, he comes to the point that he just says, do what you want to do. It's called becoming a reprobate. Oh my God, it comes, it becomes becoming a reprobate. Your conscience seared with a hot iron, no remorse, no repentance, no obedience. And finally, God just gives up. Saints, I don't want the Lord to give up on me. Oh my God, I don't want the Lord to give up on me. I want him to have mercy. I want him to apply grace. I want him to have compassion. But if I if I continue in the path of disobedience, I will push God to the place that he just gives up and says, do what you want to do. Oh, that's God throwing up his hands. That's God throwing up his hands and saying, I don't want anything else to do with you or for you. You just do what you want to do. That's God in the most frustrated state that a God could be, that the people will not obey his word. God is challenging each of us. My time is up and I got to quit. I'll come back to this tomorrow. But God is challenging each of us to be obedient to his word, to be obedient to his commandments, to be obedient to the voice of his spirit. And absolutely, I do not want the Lord to give up on me. Lord, don't turn your back on me. Lord, don't, hallelujah, let me straight away. Lord, teach me how to follow. Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. I got to quit. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for you and thank God for the word. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness. I thank you for everything you are doing in our midst. I thank you, God, because you continue to bless your sons and your daughters. I thank you for traveling mercies. And I thank you for last night's rest. And I thank you, Lord, for waking us up today. Lord, we're in our right minds. We were able to get up and get out of the bed and get prepared to join this great cadre of believers, God, from all over the world. Lord, you've been so good to us. Oh, God, that all we can say is thank you. We know we didn't do it. We know we didn't create it. We know we didn't make it happen, but it was your grace and your mercy and your love that brought us together one more time, and we say thank you. I thank you for life. I thank you for health. I thank you for strength. I thank you for grace. I thank you for mercy. I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are in this prayer room today. And I'm asking you, God, to flood the prayer room with your anointing and your power. And God, minister to every need, whether we've come by Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. God, minister to the needs of your sons and your daughters today. Lord, I'm praying this morning that you would remember every name on the prayer list, every name, oh God, every name that's been offered by text or messenger or email. God, minister right now to that need. Lord, I'm praying today for Charles and for Shanette and for Devin and for Skylar and for Sarah and for Siobhan. I'm praying today that you remember, oh God, Bishop Charles Wright, Mother Faye Wright, that you remember, my God, Bishop William Wilkins, Sister Sarah Wilkins. God, remember the Greater Refuge Temple of New York City. Remember Greater Refuge Temple of Washington. Greater Refuge Temple, my God, of Charleston. Greater Refuge Temple, hallelujah, of Jacksonville and Lakeland. Refuge Temple of Burr 
Burlington. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in our midst. Remember Refuge Temple. Remember Masata, Refuge Temple of Columbia. Remember, my God, every church. Remember Faith Refuge of Harrisburg. Remember Shiloh of Atlantic City, Shiloh of Plainfield. Remember, my God, United Refuge of Orangeburg. Every congregation, St. John's, Macedonia. My God, every congregation, the Community Church of Astoria, the Community Church of Island, every congregation represented in this prayer this morning. I want you to bless them. God, remember LeGrand Scott and remember Cindy Tyler. Remember Mount Olive Church. Remember Straightway Church. Remember Bible Way Church. God, I'm praying for Donetta and Soretta. I'm praying for the Winters family. God, I'm praying, my God, for Camila Madison's grandson. I'm praying for Priscilla and Beverly, for Maxwell Smallwood. I'm praying for the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying, my God, for our presiding apostle, oh God, and Mother May today. I'm praying for our vice presider, my God, and Lady, hallelujah, Barry this morning, all of the apostles, God. I'm praying, my God, for all of the bishops, all of the pastors, all of the elders, the ministers, the missionaries, the deacons, all of the young people of our organization. Lord, bless them in a wonderful way. Send revival, my God, into every church. Send revival into every congregation. Lord, I'm praying today for the Thompson family, for Neil Rickenbacker, for the United Refuge Church Sunday School teachers, for the Eternal Light Ministry. God, I'm praying for Roberta Jenkins. I'm praying for Mother Holman's family. I'm praying for Milton Perkins. Everybody on this prayer list today, Lord, I'm praying for them now. God, save, deliver, set free, reclaim, restore, do what is necessary in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm praying today that you would remember, my God, everybody that's sick today, Lord, sick people everywhere. But God, I'm praying for your healing virtue to be upon the people today. I'm praying for your healing power to rest on the people because we know that you're a healer. Lord, I'm praying for Lady Davis and I'm praying, my God, for Deacon Davis today, for Sarah Corden, for Ivy, for Kenneth Jones. I'm praying for Deacon Eric Harvey. I'm praying for Sarah Williams. I'm praying for Isabella. My God, I'm praying for Kenneth Jones today. Lord, I'm praying that you would remember, my God, Nizma Muhammad. Remember Gloria Dean Pryor today. Remember, oh God, Sister Jennifer for McCarroll Johnson. Remember Mother Dugan this morning. Remember, oh God, hallelujah, Thomas. Remember Elder Sylvester Williams, God, and remember Lady Simone Williams. God, I know that you're a healer. Thank you for what you've done in Kim's life. Now continue that healing process in the name of Jesus Christ and touch the body right now in Jesus' name. I'm praying, God, that you remember my God, Minister Perkins, and remember Brother Daniel today. I'm praying that you remember Remember, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh my God, Deacon Adams, remember, hallelujah, Deacon Wilson, remember Deacon and Sister Harrison today, Lord, stretch out your healing hand in the name of Jesus to Elder Toll and Elder Dokes, God, thank you for what you're doing, remember Sister Nikita this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying for healing, oh God, for everybody that is sick today, remember, my God, Brother Phil, touch him in the name of Jesus, remember, mother to boast this morning. God, be with her right now. Touch her body from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. God, remember the sick everywhere. Remember missionary Janet Davis, missionary Joyce Domingo, missionary Gail Hardy. Remember my God, missionary Brisbane, missionary Roseman, missionary Hodges today. Remember sister Denise McLean right now. Remember my God in your precious name, mother Wilson and brother Carl. Remember my God, Deacon Grant today. Remember Pastor and Lady Winston. Remember Mother Hicks and Mother Owens today. My God, I pray for Bishop and Mother D. I pray for Apostle Keith today. Lord, I'm praying today that you remember Bishop Alfonso Brooks. Remember Bishop Early Dillard. Remember Mother Shirley Clark. Lady Andrea Maxwell. Hallelujah. Remember Mother Carol Coleman. Mother Evangeline Jenkins. In the name of Jesus, touch them now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Remember my God. Sister, hallelujah, Polk today. 
Remember Mother Coleman this morning. I'm praying, God, for your healing virtue to be upon every, hallelujah, body right now. Touch them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Send your healing virtue that only you can provide. God, remember Bishop Clonell Williams, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop, hallelujah, Hall Richard Johnson, Bishop Richard Phillips, Bishop William Jenkins, Bishop Larry Arnold, Bishop Stephen Harper today. Remember, my God, Bishop Alvin Palmer. Remember, hallelujah, Bishop Gregory Wilder. God, remember, hallelujah, Apostle Herbert Evers, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams, Apostle, hallelujah. Remember Sylvester Norwood today. Remember Brother Wiggins. Remember Brother and Mother Sherrod. Remember Mother Garland today. Dr. Hayward, Sister Hayward, Dr. Hayward's mother. Mother Jill, Mother Pride. My God, in your precious name, remember Mother Chambers. Remember Mother Carter today. Remember Mother Moorhead, Lady Staten. Remember Sister Pam Davis, God. Remember Cynthia Baisden this morning. Everybody that's suffering in their bodies, God, bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Pastor Carr and Minister Carr today. Lord, touch his body in the name of Jesus. Remember Elder Tyson and Elder Smith. God, I pray today for your healing virtue to be upon Mother Foster Henry J. Brother Cliff. My God, remember Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons today. Remember Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. I pray for Marlette this morning. I pray for Maurice today. Lord, touch and heal. I pray, my God, for Dennis, for Tony today. I pray for Kimberly. I pray for Mother Jackson, everybody, everywhere, in every hospital, nursing home, rehab center. Lord, touch and heal now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying right now that you would move, my God, upon those that are grieving everywhere. God, everywhere there's a troubled heart because they've lost a loved one. Everywhere there's a troubled heart because, God, they're grieving the loss of somebody dear to them. But I'm praying, God, that you would touch them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Kim Wright. Remember Sheila Jackson's family. Remember Terry Epps. Remember, my God, the Nicholson family, the Moore family. Remember Miss Sue. Remember Fernando Moore. Remember Evelyn Morgan Jackson. Remember Yvonne Edwards, Jimmy Little. Remember the Penn family, the Martin family, the Baldwin Miller family, the Glover Doja family. Remember the Barr family today. Remember the, the McClendon Pulley family. Remember Bishop and Lady Valier. Remember Lady Bishop this morning. Oh God, in her family, the Bishop and the Perry family. God, touch them. Oh God, in as they lay precious mother to rest. Lord, I'm praying today that you will remember my God, Lady Wilder and the Wilder Dempsey family. Remember in the name of Jesus. Oh God, the Garland family. Remember families everywhere that are grieving. God, touch them and strengthen them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Mother Walker and Mother Moya. Remember Jalisa. Remember Jackie. Remember Hallelujah Jerry. Remember Takesha. Remember Whitney. Remember Phoenicia and their families. God, remember in the name of Jesus, Lady Maxwell, Charles and Cedric and the family. Oh, Lord, I'm praying today for Dr. Carter and the family. I'm praying for Apostle Field Shekinah and the family. I'm praying for Mother Harrell and her family. Mother Hallelujah Grant and her family. I'm praying, God, for your grace to be upon these precious souls everywhere. God, strengthen them right now. The Groover family, the Kramer family, the Hargrove family, the Blunt family. God, remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. God, remember the Meadows family, the Moyer family, the Perkins family. God, I pray today that you remember the Dockery family, Sister Pam, her mom, and her sisters. I'm praying today that you would look on every grieving family everywhere. Look on Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean Melvin and Street families, the Ransom family, the Jackson family, the Newkirk family, the Ned family, the Green family, Brenda and the Allen McNeely family, Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family, Trell and Ryan and the Allen Williams family, Tommy and Michelle, my God, and the Clark family, the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, the Bankses, the Middletons, the Taylors. God, I pray for the Felix family. Hallelujah. The Zapata family. My God, the Mannix, the Boogums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, the Briggs family. God, I pray for the Taylors, the Phillips family, the Josephs, the Davis family, the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayes, the Moors. God, remember the Austins, the Harbisons, the Adams and the Austin family, every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every child, every parent today, every sibling and loved one. God, give comfort that only the Holy Spirit can provide. Lord, I pray today for 
everybody that needs a miracle. As we obey and trust you, God, open up heaven for us. Bless the body of Christ. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon, all of the young people, God, all of the first ladies, the pastor's children. God, remember ministers and deacons, musicians, singers, and psalmists. God, touch the church today and strengthen the church. Help the church to trust you and obey you and heed your word today. God, I pray for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I pray by God that you remember everybody that's on a job today. Remember school employees and students everywhere. Remember everybody that needs a job. Lord, create opportunities and bless my God as only you can. And Lord, look on this troubled world. Everywhere there's trouble from the Middle East, my God, to Asia, to Europe, to Africa, to the Caribbean, to the United States. Lord, heal the land. Heal the land from sin. Heal the land from hatred, from jealousy, from violence. Heal the land from injustice. Heal the land from racism and sexism. And let your church be the light of the world. My God and the salt of the earth. God, we need you like never before. Bless us today. Keep us today. Strengthen us today. Let somebody walk into unexpected favor that only you can provide. And Lord, we give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on and give God praise right now. Everybody on this line, hallelujah, come on and give God praise right now. Everybody thank him. Everybody love him. Everybody celebrate him. Hallelujah, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in this day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. This is my declaration for today. Lord, let me follow your voice. Lord, let me follow your voice. Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. My God, a stranger they will not follow. If you know the voice of God, hallelujah, you won't allow yourself to be deceived. If you know the voice of God, you won't allow yourself to wallow in disobedience. If you know the voice of God, you are actively seeking to please God each day, knowing that God is able to provide and knowing that there's a blessing, my God, for obedience. There's a blessing simply by doing what the Lord says to do. The Bible says very clearly, no good thing with he withhold from them that walk upright before him. That means God will open up the treasures in heaven, the treasures in heaven to bless somebody that will trust and honor him. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your morning is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. You can go back and watch the prayer from yesterday, the Sunday school from yesterday, Day. For some reason, we had some tech issues with our wireless streaming, and so you only get pieces of the worship. But the pieces were good because God blessed us yesterday in Refuge Temple. He really moved in our midst. So you can go back and watch the little clips that are available. Hallelujah. And trust me, the Lord blessed us as we talked about Christ's likeness. Look, I want to thank everybody that sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do and we appreciate them, and we appreciate you. Today is Sacrifice Monday. No gift too large, no gift too small, and everybody can make a gift. Do what you can in the name of Jesus Christ. You can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online. Our website is www.refugetempleinisinnorth.com. C is in Carolina. 
Giver.com and you can make your gift on the donate page. You can also give through the Givelify app. Just simply type in Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church and you can make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign, the number one refuge, and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all for being a part of the morning prayer family. I'm inviting all of the family that can to meet us in Petersburg on Friday and Saturday of this week. Friday night at 7.30, Saturday at 2 p.m., we will be with the Northern Virginia Diocese at Calvary Temple Church, 110 North Dunlop Street in the city of Petersburg. And you can be with us. Bishop Daryl Thomas and Lady Thomas are there as the leaders of the diocese. The pastor is District Elder Wesley Taylor. And we thank God for the lovely First Lady, Mother Carol Taylor. So meet us there in the name of Jesus Christ and God will certainly bless each of you. Look, I want everybody to stay in prayer. And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Keep praying for Refuge Temple because God is blessing us. And let's pray one for another that the grace of God might cover and keep all of us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord allow each of us to hear his voice and obey his voice. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom.